CMML and a secondary acute myeloid leukemia arising out of CMML um, after there's progression of the disease uh, with treatment with a hypomethylating agent, there really is no standard of care of what to treat with next. And this still is a highly unmet clinical need. Uh, so venetoclax combinations have emerged as being highly effective and, and quite safe in patients with acute myeloid leukemia. So to the best of our knowledge, uh, I presented uh, the first data set exclusively looking at uh, outcomes with venetoclax-based therapies in both chronic phase CMML and then CMML with blast transformation, which really is a form of secondary acute myeloid leukemia arising out of an antecedent chronic phase CMML. And it was only a, a small group of patients, so uh, 17 patients with chronic phase CMML and 15 patients with CMML with blast transformation. But the, the outcomes were, were encouraging. Uh, almost all of these patients had progressed or have been refractory to uh, hypomethylating agent-based regimens, so the standard of care therapy. Um, and encouragingly, in the chronic phase group, almost there's an almost 60% uh, overall response rate, with uh, most of those being marrow responses, so clearance of excess blasts in the chronic phase group. And then in the uh, blast transform groups so of secondary AML cases, there's an overall response rate of 67%. Uh, and most of those actually were either a complete response or complete response with incomplete count recovery, so high quality responses. And in that blast transform group, out of the uh, seven patients that had responded with a valuable uh, minimal residual disease or MRD testing by flow cytometry, they actually were negative for MRD by flow cytometry. So these were really good quality responses. So that, that was quite encouraging in, in, this, uh, in these two groups. Um, however, the duration of response was quite short unless these patients were bridged to a subsequent consolidative uh, strategy. So usually uh, allogeneic stem cell transplant. So in those patients that were bridged to a subsequent allogeneic stem cell transplant, which was about 30% of the patients in both groups, so the chronic phase group and the blast transform group, um, were bridged directly to an allogeneic stem cell transplant, which again is very encouraging um, in this, this patient group. And um, safety was quite good. Uh, the main thing is that about 50% of patients in both, both groups, the chronic phase and blast transform groups, um, required admission at least once to hospital uh, because of febrile neutropenia um, and related infections. And so one key caution about this about venoclax-based combinations, uh, especially in CMML, uh, is that even though it's not intensive chemotherapy, it's still very myelosuppressive therapy. So we have to make sure we tailor um, the duration of venoclax, especially um, to both what the concurrent antifungal is um, that can alter the uh, pharmacokinetics of the venoclax, um, but also um, uh, tailor the uh, number of days consecutive of uh, venoclax therapy. Uh, but overall, this is very encouraging. Um, last but not least, and, and, and not surprisingly, is that um, patients uh, who had uh, poorer responses had, were at baseline or at loss of response had emergent uh, signaling pathway mutations. Um, so it's interesting. So monocytic disease in itself uh, isn't clearly resistant to the venoclax combinations. It was more the underlying biology and again, it was really mutations in the RAS pathway that predicted for uh, worse, worse responses and, and outcomes. But overall, this is really, really nice data to have.